Hello everyone, I'm Yoshi Tsugobi from Division of Nephrology and Hypertension at the University of California, Irvine. In this video, I'm going to introduce our article entitled Development and Validation of Prediction Scores for Early Mortality Upon Transition to Dialysis, which has been accepted in Mayo Clinical Proceedings. This is one of the special studies of the U.S. Renal Data System, USRTS, with a collaboration among University of California Irvine, University of Tennessee, and Kaiser Permanente Southern California. Several studies have shown that the mortality risk is high soon after dialysis initiation, which is consistently observed worldwide. Now, initiation of dialysis should be one of the biggest life events for patients with CKD. However, when they are transitioning to dialysis therapy, what kind of information we can provide regarding the survival after dialysis initiation? You may say one year mortality is 20 to 25% on average, but such summary data are not what patients want to know. They need their own information, that is, expected survival specific to themselves. Our risk prediction model for early mortality, if available, could help individualize treatment and support the shared decision-making process among clinicians, patients, and patient family members. Several prediction models have been developed to provide survival estimate after dialysis initiation. However, most of the previous models utilized the data obtained at the time of or after dialysis initiation, despite the fact that the shared decision-making process regarding dialysis initiation would sometimes require weeks to months. Additionally, model performance was not externally validated in most cases. Some studies focused on the elderly patients because they are at high risk of early mortality, but such information on the predicted survival should be available to all patients transitioning to dialysis, irrespective of their age. In this study, we included two historical cohorts of incident ESRD patients with distinct features. One is the National Cohort of the Veterans Affairs, which we call the VA cohort. It included more than 85,000 U.S. veterans who transitioned to dialysis treatment from October 2007 through March 2014. The VA cohort had a large sample size, but those included veterans had inherently unique characteristics. In addition to being individuals who retired from the U.S. military after serving four years with regular health checkups, those veterans were predominantly male and non-Hispanic white or black. The other cohort came from Kaiser Permanente Southern California, KPSC. The KPSC cohort included 9,700 patients who transitioned to dialysis treatment within the KPSC healthcare system from January 2007 through September 2015. Although the KPSC cohort had a smaller sample size than the VA cohort, it was based on the most populous mega region in California and it held an adequate sample size with racial, ethnical, and gender diversity. We then merged pre dialysis data in those cohorts with those post dialysis data derived from the US renal data system. Using Cox proportional hazard models, prediction models for mortality during the first day of dialysis were developed based on survival data up to 14 months after transition to dialysis. Follow-up started at dialysis initiation and continued until death or the date of final follow-up assessment, which was September 2, 2014. As candidate variables, we used a priori selected set of variables that were less likely to be intentionally modified, as listed in Table 1. We did not use easily modifiable variables, such as medication data, or laboratory variables including hemoglobin, serum phosphorus, and bicarbonate. The last measurement of each variable prior to ESRD transition was used in this study. Model calibration was assessed by calibration plots or group-based goodness of fit test for survival model. 
Model predictive discrimination was also assessed using the index of concordance or C statistic. In order to ensure model goodness of fit, two separate models were selected for patients with below 15 and more than or equal to 15 milliliters per minute of their last EGFR prior to dialysis initiation. Model discrimination in the internal validation cohort of veterans resulted in C statistics of 0.71 among patients with EGFR below 15 and 0.66 among those with EGFR more than or equal to 15 ml per minute, respectively. The predicted survival was highly concordant with the observed survival as shown in Figure 2. In the KPSC external validation cohort, however, observed survival was typically greater than the predicted survival, especially in the high-risk groups, as shown in Figure 2 E and F. Nevertheless, Kaplan-Meier estimates show the consistent ordering of survival and risk score percentile, i.e. high risk score, high mortality. In conclusion, we developed a prediction tool for mortality during the first year of dialysis based on pre-ESRD data in a large contemporary national cohort of U.S. veterans. Although the VA cohort had unique characteristics compared to the other population, our new risk scores appeared generalizable given that these scores were externally validated in the racially, ethnically, and gender-diverse KPSC cohort with reasonable discrimination. In order to facilitate practical implementation, we have created an online risk score calculator at www.dialysisquad.com, which provides the predicted risk of mortality at month 3, 6, 9, and 12 after initiation of dialysis. We hope our new tool could help improve nephrology care and facilitate shared decision making for individualized preparation for dialysis initiation. Thank you for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.